welcome to the channel. So this is for all you new beginners out there who've uh, watched Gold Rush over the last lockdown, the last two years, and really want to give it a go. Um, so you need a bit of persistence, you need a little bit of patience. Um, you need to get yourself down to a river that's got gold bearing river. Um, a little bit of equipment, which I'll show you in a little while, but a couple of things to look at when you come across a river. So if I turn it around, see this river here? Around this sort of area, it slows down. But if you look in the middle there, you can see where it slows down. You can see like a whirlpool starting. That's a real good settlement point, um, which is really good for trapping gold. Um, other things to look out for is, you see like rocks and boulders in the water there. So those things there will cause the water to settle behind, which is a really good which is perfect for the gold because, you know, it, it, it's heavy. Um, and in the fast water moving, it will flow down river. But when it hits a slow dropout point like that, it will slow right down, it will settle down onto the gravels below, and then it will work its way down to the bedrock, to the lowest point it can get. I'm not saying you won't find gold in the gravels, because you do, you do, it happens, but you're more likely to find gold at bedrock. So don't be disheartened if you go to a river, you spend all day digging a hole, you get down to the bedrock and there's no gold there because you don't know if somebody's not been there before. The only way to find out is by keep going back, keep trying, you know, you'll eventually get it. Another good thing to look out for is uh, exposed bedrock. Um, we call it in the gold game, nature sluice box. Why? So look here, you've got a load of exposed bedrock. Um, I'll walk down to it. So here you've got a load of exposed bedrock. This is smooth bedrock, so you won't really find much gold or catch on it. But the way that it drops and riffles, you have a few little grooves, and these sort of areas are the areas that are going to catch gold because it's going to come up over this ridge. It's going to drop down again here, and this here would be like a nice settling point because that will be stopping the flow of the water, um, which you can see along here, to be fair. So you've got loads of light material just sat in there you can see it's probably quite deep um, yes it's what we call box you're gonna get wet you're gonna scratch your fingers up you're gonna get cold but you know what it's worth it just being out here in the great outdoors you can't go wrong so just a little bit of info about the kit that you're gonna need so you just need the basics you don't need anything advanced not to start off with there's no point spending hundreds of quid on sluice boxes, you know, gravel pumps, everything else like that, if you're not going to be interested and you're not going to keep up at it. So the basic kit is snuffer bottle, somewhere to keep your gold safe. Um, this is a Garrett snuffer bottle. It comes with the Garrett gold pan set, which is pretty reasonable price. Just a simple Garrett gold pan, um, which I'll show you how to use it in a little while. Classifier or a garden sieve, whichever you prefer and a spade. That's it. I mean, you can get yourself a little bit of extras. You can go for a, uh, a gravel pump as well, which makes it really easy to suck out the gravels from the bedrock itself and catch them in your classifier. You stratify your classifier down and then you pan out your materials. Um, yeah, so that's all you really need. Um, if you really do get interested in it, other things that will come in handy, as you can see there, a viewer. So you can see under the water, you can see the bedrock and the cracks and crevices if you don't want to get wet and stick your snorkel on. A bucket. And I mean, sluice boxes. So yeah, just the basics, it's all you need. So, three basic things you need for gold panning. Pan, pacifier, spade. That is literally all you need. So what you want to do, grab your pan, your pacifier, drop it down. You know, obviously you're going to be in the front of the water, it's going to want to flow away, so you've got to rock it up. You're going to be throwing rocks in it anyway. Throw your spade, stick it in your hole. It's in that good material. Sand, pile of the dirt. You can tell nobody's really been in this spot before. Once you've got a good amount of material in your classifier, you don't want to overfill your classifier because you'll have too much in your pan. Literally, you want it under the water. Fill it, 
do a depressifier. If you want to wash off any of the big rocks, pull them out. You know, because they work out a bit of a pain when you try and stratify it. Grab all your classifier firmly. So with a twisting motion, it washes all the rocks, washes all the light material off. All the heavies will sink to the bottom of your classifier and into your gold pan. Don't forget to always check your classifier for any possibility of gold nuggets. You never know. It's a hematite in there. Watch your fingers, you always find pieces of glass dumped in the riverbed. So just be careful. And you'll see I'm wearing gloves. Keep it. And then you're left with a pan full of material. You've got the grooves, which will catch your gold on the outside, facing downstream from the current, pan in the water. Shake it back and forth. Clear quite a few times. What that does, that stratifies the material. So all the heavy stuff gets a chance to settle down to the bottom of your pan. And all the light stuff will sit on top of the top. So you liquefy it. So everything in your pan basically becomes liquid. And all the heavy stuff settles to the bottom. Tilt the pan away from me, both hands on the back. And it should just lift up and down. Let the water do the work. Don't try and flush it out the pan because you'll lose it. Stratify again. Notice where I'm holding it, slight angle. This bit's at the bottom of the pan here, so all the heavy material will be sitting around this bottom ridge. And yet again, let the water do the work. There we go. Nice and gentle, there's no rush. You're not making pancakes. Wash off all that light, sandy, blondy material on top. You start to see all the heavies coming through. So this area is very notorious for hematite. Well, as you can see in the pan, there's lots and lots of hematite heavies in there. Lots of heavies in there. So you just carry on repeating the process. You trust those riffles to catch any of the gold that's in that pan. You have to trust your equipment. You'll very rarely lose gold out of the gold pan unless you're flicking material around left, right, and center. So when you get down to a reasonable amount of material, you can knock all these big ones back. Flick them out the back of your pan. They just get in the way sometimes. So now I'm left with a small amount of material. So what you want to do is hold the pan slightly facing up, hands on the back, rock it back and forth, just wash the material with the water very gently, and that'll bring down all the light stuff. Every now and then you might get a little stone in there, you have to move out the way, but just keep washing it back and forth. And there was no gold in this pan. But there you have it. Really straightforward, simple, basic gold panning. Don't need to go out and buy any expensive equipment. Give it a go. Get out there and enjoy yourselves.